is Darren Palmer. I'm the Global Product Development Director for Battery Electric Vehicles, and I'm one of the founding members of Team Edison, which is the team um, that do the major strategy for our electric vehicles and creative vehicles. And I'm Jason Kestrud, I'm the Global Brand Director uh, for Team Medicine Car Battery Electric Vehicles, working together with Darren Palmer uh, on the end to end business, all the way from upfront strategy to product development and how we actually launch and communicate these vehicles. So it's a pleasure to have you guys here walking through the car today. So we, we, we just come back from LA uh, where we had the launch event, and you may have seen uh, last night. Jason having stopped on the way, it just come straight through because we wanted to come and share with you and show you firsthand what we can see. Um, once in a generation a car comes along that's had passion in every inch of the car, uh, maybe after you see this you, you might see that as well. And that's why it's worth coming to show you what's here and show you personally because we, we want to show you what we've got. Okay, so what we're going to do is a very large group. So we're going to take you around the vehicle from the outside and point out to you what to look at and what it means, what some of it means. Um, and then we'll give you the chance to come and look at it yourself and we'll be here to answer any question you have or any uh, discussion you would like, okay? So that's the format we'll use. Um, so, yes, you like to sure. Sure. sure, I'll start it off. So, uh, you may have already heard, in 2017, uh, Jim Hackett came on board as CEO, Jim Farley came back from Europe, and the electric car program in its current state was not accepted. You know, Ford was going down the compliance path once again, sort of Focus Electric 2.0. And what we recognize is, is we really needed to begin to future-proof our iconic brands. And this meant playing to our strengths, leveraging our best brands, and building out families of vehicles around that. So with this vehicle, when we really went back into the customer, we did a different kind of benchmark. Instead of just looking at how other manufacturers are approaching customers today, we said, how has technology really changed the world in the last 10 years? And as you guys all know, technology is removing friction from our lives, making our lives easier, more seamless. And it's also amplifying things we really love, building communities and new experiences. And we said, how do we leverage that and put that into a vehicle? And above all, this had to be a must-have vehicle. This had to be a new hero vehicle. And with that, we wanted to really leverage our best strengths. Mustang, of course, is an icon. 55 years of history, 10 million vehicles on the road. And when you think back to 1964, when Mustang was launched right here at the World's Fair, on the town of the road in Queens, it was about the spirit of adventure, freedom of the open road, this idea of moving fast and free through life. And what Mustang does, what all great brands do, is they're like a superhero costume. You know, you put them on and you feel like kind of this better, badder, cooler version of yourself. This is what we wanted our electric vehicles to deliver. And this was finding the opportunity with technology, the opportunity with technology and costs coming down to a point that we could offer a, an obtainable dream car. Something that really brought that same spirit to new customers grow the Mustang family for the first time in 55 years. This is bringing two of four motor companies' most favorite and their deepest passions, which is sustainability, making the world a better place, and delivering something to our customers that really makes their lives better. Uh, with that, we can walk you around the design a little bit. So, given that this was a Mustang in the summer of 2017, we had to completely tear up the vehicle architecture that we had. We had begun life with like many manufacturers, kind of shoehorning batteries into a car. At a certain point, the wheelbase had grown long enough to at least accommodate a big battery to get that 300 mile range. And Darren will touch on more on that later. But most importantly, when we said Mustang inspired and then eventually all the way into Mustang, we knew we needed premium proportions. And this meant a complete tear up. So starting with the nose, we know that the Mustang design is famous for that kind of fist punching through the air front end, a bit of that sharp nose the scowling brow, that long, powerful hood, the very short front overhand, and what we always like to refer to as the dash to axle. You know, that eight pillar and that cabin set really far back. The really fast roof line was exceptionally important, and what you guys are gonna be shocked about later is Darren Palmer, my colleague and friend, who is six foot six on a bad day, I mean, he's six seven, uh, he can fit in the back seat of this vehicle. So this vehicle is incredibly accommodating, uh, and then, of course, the powerful rear launch, the great stance, and the iconic Mustang details like the tri-bar lamp. So all of this really brings and modernizes the Mustang form. We also knew that while Mustang always has that brutish strength, this needed to be a more fluid and seductive and expressive vehicle. You know, our younger, newer customers want something that, that looks fast and fluid, and it plays in how they move through the world, right? So you'll see also because of aerodynamics, you know, this vehicle had to be very slippery. And you'll see some really interesting features, the fact that there are no visible door handles. Darren is gonna walk you through that. Uh, but with that, needless to say, we're very, very proud of this vehicle. We're really excited about it. And, uh, 
I'll be happy to take your questions after. So, something that's not immediately obvious about the clinical is that it was developed using human-centered design. This is something that Jim Hackett brought to us uh, from his experience in cryo jobs. And that means you start with a central question um, of what you're trying to do, and invariably through the process it changes completely. So you don't say, I have a big screen, how will I fill it up? You say, what are you trying to, trying to do, and then what do I need to give you to make your life easier or better? And so one example, and I'll walk you through many, but one of them is the door entry system. So we started with, what type of door handle would you like? But again, that's the wrong question. The question is, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm trying to get into the vehicle. So this vehicle, when you walk down the stairs on a Monday morning, coming to work with a bit of coffee and your laptop and your bag and your coat, you want to get in. As you walk up to the vehicle, it detects you via the phone. It locks your profile, loads the profile into the car, and unlocks and opens the door automatically for you. And it's using a pusher system that pushes the door open. So now it's ready. It can't move back in, it's solid. But now you can just move up and pull in and just get into the vehicle with all your things in there. It's an example of making your life a little bit easier. Also, the same system pushes the door open and will break ice or break the seal on the door. That's that stickiness you feel when you put a traditional door handle. It breaks through that. And so that means you only need a small handle. We tried many, many different. People wanted one fluid motion effortless. That's why the handle's small, because the door does all the work. You push it open, you just open here with your fingers. But that's why it has that system. I'm sorry it will beep, because I left the key out, because prior session somebody locked the key in the car, and you don't want to be like that, so it will be. Um, the same as on the back door, so highly aerodynamic. Same thing, you push the door, but you can't close it. So now you put it down, you put it just like a childhood, anywhere you want to, just pull it off, completely simple. And again, it stays really clean in that area because the airflow over the vehicle keeps out the clean area as well. It becomes really obvious in here, unaffected by ice, snow, rain, etc. So we're really proud of that. And that's just one example of how human centered design leads you to a different approach, a different answer than you would in the past. So okay, I'd like to show you another one. Maybe um, ask you to come around a little bit, but I'm not going to jump in because it won't hear me in there, okay? So obviously, the first thing you notice when you step into the vehicle is the screen system. This is a revolutionary part of this car. And what actually happened was, we, came, we um, went around the world to talk to customers quickly. That's what human sense of design teaches you to do. Even before you've got any and you talk about what people want, and we went to say, what do you want? Oh, I want a nice screen, I can control the system. Because we had the question, how do I make a next-gen HMI system? Of course, the wrong question again. So when we saw what was happening in China, where A-class cars had 18 screens of standard, and the more upmarket cars were already putting screens all over the vehicle, we said, we came back to Detroit and said, what have we got? And they showed us what we had, and said, it's not good enough. It's not even good enough to buy it. But what are we going to do? So in the same way as Jim formed Team Edison, we formed a Tiger team on software made up of the brightest and best we have, and we enabled them to work like a software company, which means unhindered, unhindered by management, uh, with the resources they need, cross-functional group, fast access to customers, and they developed this system you see in a matter of 90 days. Along the way, they determined that they can write a car infotainment system in HTML5, the same as web language, which gives access to graphics um, and all sorts of other libraries that you can use to make things easier. They tested it live with customers in multiple rounds, and they served the prototype from a, a PC in the center of, the, of their room. And when they saw customers on video feed getting stuck on something, they changed it live and tried again. And actually, along the way, we thought they would want it to be like a phone where you swipe it. But you don't. You only want that on the phone because you're staring at the phone. In a car, you're not staring at it. And so the question changed to, no, no, how can I make a system that helps you with your life? And how will it help you if it doesn't know you? And so the key part of the system is that it knows you. Before the car even, you even buy the car, before you even take delivery, the car, the system will know you. When you approach the system, it loads your profile into the car, and everything you do is trying to help you. So it's got machine intelligence. If you leave work every Monday and go to the gym, it learns that very quickly, and it will offer up going to the gym. If you call your wife, partner, mother, on a Friday afternoon, it will say, we want to call your mother, 
and that's in an area that's yours. There's really only two things to learn to use a system. There's zero learning curve, there's no home button, there's no back button. So there's only two things, the car and you. And under you is all the things you do, your profile, if you're calling somebody, where you go, and all your stuff. Because part of the research we did said, uh, what do you want? Well, one person wants Spotify, one person wants Waze, someone else loves Google. So basically, everybody wants different things. You just want your stuff. And so the system has CarPlay, Android Auto, it also has, has device link, which means it picks up apps that are on your phone. And then it has other apps that are native. And so you press your area and you get your stuff. You don't care where it came from, if it's phone device link, any of that, it's just there and you can use it, and that's the purpose of the system. Completely turning on its head what it normally does. It also has a window system, and the window system um, has things called dash cards. So the main area that you're using a lot of the time, as you interact with it, it's learning what you use and giving you more of that. So um, while you're on navigation, if you've used it recently, there'd be a card for your phone, and that card will have muting, calling key contacts and opening and closing calls. If you've used um, music recently, you'll have a Spotify card, and that card will have next track, last track, select album, and so on. So you don't even have to come out of your main navigation to go to that card. And as you use it, the things you use will go to the top. And really, most people use about four things. Nav, music, phone, and maybe some EV information or something like that. And that stuff just appears. You, you can press to load a new one, load it, but if you don't use it much, it will sink away. So it readjusts all the time to you. And that's you know, the key input of that system. Another thing I'll mention is the cluster. So um, we've tested with many people, and the driver wants their information at close hand. That's, that's not for everybody in the car. But that's, it's a clear highlight. So the center screen's large, and the cluster is smaller because that's just for information for the driver. But all the settings, all the control is all in the center, nice and clear. And this car has advanced features such as auto drive that it will come in and will load via software. And so with systems like this, they're called DATS, driver um, information systems. And they, you have to be very careful control of that and very clear. And so that screen is also to control all of those systems so that people know very clearly is it in auto, who's driving, who's in charge, of all of those things. That's why it's got that cluster. Also, it keeps the center clear. If you don't have a cluster, you have to put the information in the center and it clogs it up. That's another reason we've got that there. Um, one other thing I want to point out is the center console. Not quite as exciting sounding as the screen, but that was developed human centric too. It starts with what you want to do, not with what shape is it is. And the first thing you want to do where to put the phone. So you'll find a perfect place to put your phone. And when you put it there, it will charge and it'll connect to the car wirelessly, no wires. But also, many people have two phones these days, business and work, for other reasons. So there's a second place to put your phone. And that one has connection sockets for every type of phone because your passenger actually doesn't want to put it there and leave it there because they're always picking it up and using it. So we learned that and that's why there's also cable um, ability there for that. And being a bed, you have a flat floor at the bottom. And so we have, we're able to put a two-tier console that has storage space underneath that you can't see it when you're sat there. So that the things you dump there are not invisible all the time and look messy. Then it has a separate area which is covered in storage with slider and of course the cup holders. So again, even the console is designed very, very carefully. And I think it's important to note that a lot of the insights for the interior, again, came from actually creating with our customers. So for the first time in Ford, there's a lot of firsts with this vehicle. And this again was driven by Jim Hackett's push for human-centered design. We actually created really low, pro, uh, low fidelity uh, interior bugs. And we brought customers in to test. And we basically had Lego block style systems where we could swap out different center consoles, different door panels, different sizes of screens and clusters. And this allowed us to really iterate and understand with our customers the real use cases. How are they, how are they doing life hacks to utilize storage area or create storage area in their car? And this again was completely a uh, shift of paradigm for the designers and results in an interior that is incredibly usable, spacious, open, uh, and gives you a perfect environment to drive. Absolutely. So um, I'll show you one more innovation at the back, but let's just talk about performance for a moment. So 
the, the cars developed ground up um, to be a battery electric car. It only just, it's only just now that the technology is available, battery density, to get a vehicle with the performance that we've got with the current technology. And it has to be built ground up. So this vehicle has over 300 miles of real world range, that's EPA range. And um, it's very difficult to do that. It has to be built from the start. We have a power cell system that are very dense, very safe, and give that level of performance. And then you've got the drive performance. Our most powerful version is mid three seconds, zero to 60. Now, really we found, we can explain to people what the car is and everything I'll show you today. It gets people to about 40%. And then we let them drive it. And we haven't worked out a way to let people feel what it's like yet. About 1% of people have electric cars, about 3%, something like that, have driven in performance electric cars. And everybody else is a little bit, you know, they know what they are, they've seen it, but I cannot describe to you what it feels like. We must have put 400 people through our performance car, and we've explained everything we explained to you about it. And it gets to them for 40%. And then we put them in the car, and in 30 seconds they, oh my God, I never realised. I, I should just tell you, I know, but I just never, I, oh my God. That's the kind of feeling you get. That's what you get in the 4P premium, that's mid five second. In the mid three second GT, this is the level of performance that were on Ferraris and Lamborghinis a few years ago. And this is a five block vehicle with passenger space. So, um, so we included a mode system, where on a Monday morning when you've got coffee in your hand, you can press a button and it takes the whole thing to surrender. The lighting, the sound, the steering, <coughs> the, the pedal mapping, and the acceleration, because sometimes you need that chill. But on a Friday afternoon when you use work, you hit unbridled and it will give you the whole lot and I guarantee your heart will be up here by the time you finish to drive. So those we can't show you today, but as I say, and we're working out how to try and show people that because, yeah, it's about 40% we can get people to. Driving is brilliant. Yeah. So there's one more, one more innovation I want to show you. Um, I'll describe it actually and then let you see because there's a lot of people to walk around. So, as I say, there's the super exciting stuff like the crazy performance and screens, but the console we're just as proud about, and we're just as proud about the luggage. Because we used an innovation we developed actually in cars in Europe, because they're much smaller, the roads are smaller, and you struggle to get as much utility as you can in the car. <coughs> two, two tw of twin boys, eight years old, and I can never get a big enough car. So we developed an innovation, cars have parcel shelves, usually this type of car. That shelf is good, it hides what's in the luggage, but it gets in the way. So we've invented a new innovation here which we patented. And so when you lift up the lift gate, it comes with the lift gate, it comes out of the way. That means it has no shelving, which means we can make it completely square at the back. I mean, you can load much bigger boxes into this than in vehicles maybe a class up in And so I'll let you have a look at that yourself, but that's a, a, another little innovation it just shows the passion that the people who worked on this car cared about in every inch. Oh, and there's one more. Yeah, the front trunk. Yeah, the front trunk as well. So, as you guys are aware, uh, few vehicle manufacturers have benefited from the fact of taking advantage of the fact that there's no longer an engine block in the front end. Well, they've treated this like a normal trunk in the sense that it's carpeted. What we've done is actually given you this rubberized finish. Why is that? We've actually put a drain in there. So as you can imagine, a couple of use cases, let's say you're hiking or it's snowy, it's a, a wet day, you have kids that play soccer, they have sweaty gear. Dump it in there, when you get home, you can actually just hose it off. You can put your food in there, it can be hot, it can be cold, you can fill it with ice and put your beverage of choice. So the front gate is born. So there's a lot of things that we feel in terms of, again, real human-centered use cases that are going to make this vehicle, again, an even better part of your life. Yeah, and uh, you wouldn't be the first to spot that you could fill that with ice and uh, drinks of your choice. And there's maybe Not alcoholic, of course. Of course. Yeah. And, and, um, and there's maybe a new thing called front gating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I think, yeah, <laughs> so I think that, that's. Let you have a look yourselves. Um, and then you can ask us absolutely anything. Um, we'll be here as long as um, yeah, you need us. And. Um, I'm pretty easy to spot. <laughs> Anything about safety? Just the standard? 
So of course, the, uh, we develop all our cars to win out top safety picks, uh, but we don't get we don't get earned it until we test it and earn it. So of course, we develop all our cars to be those top. I think two things that, to note that are really important though is that this vehicle has the lowest center of gravity of all vehicles in the Ford portfolio, with the exception of our GT, as in the GT that raced at Le Mans, <laughs> so the five hundred thousand dollar GT supercar, and the Ford Mustang Coupe. So the handling of this vehicle, the safety of this vehicle on the road is going to be unparalleled for an SUV. And we're really excited about that. Absolutely. And of course, has all the latest DAP features, pre-collision and all of those things as well that we have on all of our vehicles. I mean, we want our electrics to be a technology showcase, so we, we always take the high end. And I mentioned later we'll, we'll do a software update for Auto Drive. I guess one thing I didn't forget to say is every single module in this car, the electronics modules, cars have many, every single one can be updated over the air. And so our plan, the cars get better over time. Yeah. And the second thing, um, it has a thing called AB swap. That means when you choose an up, uh, update, it downloads to this piece of memory, and when you're ready, you stop, you press the button, and it swaps. If it fails for any reason, it just goes back. It never, leave, it never leaves you in the middle of an update. It, it's, if you have a system that deletes and replaces, then if anything happens or goes wrong, there is no software to the car, and that means there's no car moving. So that's something we considered very important and we put into that car. I think that's uh, unique in vehicles at the moment. And is that a user control thing? Yes, so uh, updates will come from the company, which will be features, and of course bug fixes and things like this, just like your phone, so they come. You, you'll have control of when that applies, but you can download it in the background. You can say, ready, go, download, or schedule it, and it'll download, and then it'll apply when you want it to. You can sit at night and apply, or you can sit any time, because it applies in a moment. If but anything goes wrong, it's just critical things. You said every, each every each single each. thing. Everything. We can update everything. Safe right. to push right. it as well. user can't swap back on something that is updated that is not a user feature. It's something that's safety critical is going to be updated, but not controlled. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. The roof looks like it's perfect for some solar boosting. Anything? So, we've looked at solar for a long time, and again, you know, given that Ford is very passionate and committed to sustainability and efficiency, it's something that our engineers and Darren can expand on for have looked at. The technology, honestly, is still not there yet for the cost trade-off. Uh, so, we could do something along those lines, but it would not really be of value to the customer at this point. It's just not there yet. Yep. And like, so you uh, had mentioned that this vehicle has some things in it that your other Ford vehicles don't have. Uh, will those, some of these technologies and all then migrate to the rest of the Ford well, line? That's a very good question. So the way Team Edison have looked at these cars is uh, these electric cars will, will lead us into the future. So as we discover innovations and things that work for us, we would be looking to apply them to all, all, more of our portfolio where appropriate. In fact, it worked the other way too. The luggage area came from one of our other vehicles, just a brand new innovation, and that actually spurned the uh, use of the uh, automatic water drain on the front. That came from another car as well, the Puma we just launched in. So they're inspiring each other. They're, the way we're organized as program teams and as core teams, and whenever we learn something, we share it around. So it's a good question. You can imagine we'd be looking to apply te technologies from this to our other. So when do your teams get together and share that information? Is that like a quarterly thing that you go, um, or does no, somebody no. go look over and see a drawing somewhere, and oh, oh we want that on our team? No, it's, it's a very transparent system. So the, the entire company's been reorganized into what they call a enterprise uh, product line management. So Team Medicine was the pilot for that, where we had a concentrated team of passionate experts to really tackle a problem. Now all the businesses are built that way. They own end-to-end -end business. That has a leader, that's Jim Bombeck, and Jim Bombeck brings us all together and we share what we, we know and learn and look where we can apply it across the portfolio. So, so, but part of that is, so the team work out where to play, how to delight customers. Then the core engineering team actually does engineering. So the, our core team that have been working on many of our vehicles engineer the car in detail. They are organized cross-functional, so they're organized, the lock team is the same lock team for all the cars. So when they learn about locks for this car, they're already pre-informed for the next car. The next car comes and we look at the customer requirement and say, does this technology fit for that? But each time we don't ask anymore, what type of door handle? We ask, what do you want to do? 
and what does that customer want to do? And then they, that's what informs the design. Another good example of sharing technology and innovation. So on the design side of the business, we've long been searching to do active aerodynamic surfaces. So active grill shutters is something that this, this is our first vehicle that features that. So instead of it being an active shutter behind the grill, it's actually what we call the A surface, the style surface of the vehicle actually moves. So when the batter needs additional cooling, those shutters will open, so it allows airflow. But we have the liquid cooled system that generally takes care of everything. Yeah, but really that's cool. an example where that will be put across many ICE vehicles because again, it helps aerodynamic efficiency at speed when the car doesn't need as much cooling. Uh, whereas as you know, when you're sitting in traffic, you need that that greater airflow. It kind of looks cool when it's working. Yeah, too. it's pretty cool. <laughs> so they're open because the, uh, the uh, aircon is inside or inside the car. Well, Can you speak to the level of, of autonomy? Oh, sorry, we had a cross uh, okay. question. Uh, will you be bundling chargers and installation of home chargers with this vehicle? So, again, across the whole usage and ownership of the car, Team Medicine is made up of really half a, a, a PD product development, the rest are every other group. So, charging, over the air, marketing, design. So, that group sales looked service. at sales, service. they looked at what do you need as a charger? So you have a new a person deciding, oh, maybe I want an electric car. Is going to go through the whole cycle of what do I need and where do I get? And we said, Ford, our job is to make, you know, bring this to people as it becomes the early majority. So we have to think about that. So we thought really deeply about that and boxes and complication and everything. So guess what? The car comes with everything you need, just like your laptop. It's in the car. It's a cable and the cable is, can be used when you're out and about, or it can be used at home. And all you need is a, a socket, a bit like your dryer socket. And so now all you have to do is go and get that put in the house and we're working with Amazon Home to enable you to do that. And you can you could look, you get, and get that before the car arrives. And then you plug the power into the socket and it will charge it at 9.6 kilowatts. Yeah, uh, it's a fast charge, it's called a level two charge. But That's we don't even want 22 that. miles per hour. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you can get the, the wall box as an option as well, which can give you 32 miles per hour. Yeah. So basically between eight and nine hours, you can have a full charge at home. So just like plugging your cell phone in at night, the next morning, you've got your, your full battery. So the, the reality is, is that there's a lot of anxiety around range because again, people, number one, they say charging, I don't see, where is it? You know, you see Shell, you see VP, you see Exxon Mobil, et cetera. You know, they're not noticing that there are actually literally tens of thousands of chargers out there. Uh, some are advertised for a certain brand, most are not. Uh, so with that respect, it's part of our job to really help people get over that hump. You know, the, the trust factor that Ford brings is important. And that's why we've actually bundled together, you know, what we feel are the, the best groups of chargers to offer 12,000 chargers to our customers across the, across the U.S. So you have never more than 40 miles between chargers. And with the Ford Pass app and the HMI system that Darren's going to explain to you further later, you're going to be able to do all your route planning. It has live map updates, so it will always have all the chargers on your route, where you need to stop, how many plugs are available, how long you need to stop. So you're going to be covered. Not to mention that most people don't drive more than 40 miles a day. So if you have 300 miles and you plug it in at night, you're going to have 300 miles tomorrow. In terms of fast charging, we've got a couple great solutions. So working with Electrify America, this vehicle is going to be able to do from 10% battery to 80% in just 45 minutes. So literally, you stop, you get a cup of coffee, you have kids, you grab a hamburger, you go to the bathroom, your car's charged almost 80%. The other thing is, in 10 minutes on the fast charger, because we have 150 kilowatt peak charging, you're gonna get 47 miles. So literally, it's like a splash and dash gas stop where you, you know, run into the quickie mart and grab a sandwich or a soda, 10 minutes, you have 47 extra miles. So we're very confident that we're really giving customers the solution they need to get over the hump. Yeah, most of the time, sorry, well, but, 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 but most of the time, it's the same as the door locks on the screen. Instead of you having to get into a whole load of knowledge about charging, just say, I want to go to Chicago. You can do it on your phone or in the car. And it'll say, good, here's the distance. You can not charge. You can actually make it without charging. Or you can stop here halfway and start. And if you do that for 20 minutes, you'll arrive with this much charge. And so you go, most people have to stop for a coffee break or something on a long journey. And you charge. What we've, we watched people we're testing people. They said, get a coffee, do some email. They do get the coffee, do some email, and then when the timer goes off, and they go, oh, I just got started on my email. You know, they, it goes very quickly, right? So, but the car tells you what you need to do and how much you'll have at the end. And, and if you say, oh, is there coffee there? Because I want a coffee stop. You can check it, it'll tell you. It's live connected maps. So it'll tell you what facilities are there.
There's a lot of what seems like private locations which have public charges like hotels, mm -hmm. uh, even ski resort parking lots. Does the app include those as well? Yes. Yeah. So okay. our live map, so you can use, as Darren mentioned, our system allows you to import all your favorite apps. You know, we're not here to build you a better app than OpenTable or Fandango or the things you like to use. And some people love Waze or they love Google Maps or what have you. However, our system will have live updates of all our charging. So you'll want to use our navigation system when you're in the car, generally speaking, if you're on a long trip, because you're going to know where everything is, how many plugs are available. And currently, I think we're at 12,500 yep. chargers yep. and 38,000 plugs across the United States. Yep. What do you guys feel is the uh, maximum life expectancy of the battery? That's the one thing about batteries I've always wanted. So, to yeah, so, so we, we stand behind the car very strongly. So we have an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty, and we guarantee that it has at least a 70% um, range usability at that. Guarantee that. How many years? Eight years, 100,000 miles. That's a guaranteed 70% range. Okay. Still existing in the battery. So, so for these very, very strong. Up. These batteries are nothing like the one in your iPhone. <laughs> okay, they, the system keeps it within an operating range. Uh, when you, if you're going to use it the next morning and it's cold, the car knows that because it's live connected, and it will keep the battery uh, the best optimal range when you use it. It's a liquid cool system. Liquid cool system, and it will adjust, that, and that gives a, a long um, usability of the battery. The 70% is our worst, worst case in worst condition. Every worst thing you can think of. And we still stand behind that. Um, real usage is likely to be much better than that warranty level. And we'll continuously improve it over the life of the car, because it's good for everybody, right? So every time we learn something and we learn about the car, we can keep adjusting and keep helping and making the battery the best it can be. The uh, level three chargers are very expensive to use. So with Electrify America, are you giving owners free charging for a period of time, or will they have to pay for that themselves? as opposed to most level two charges are free. So there's, there's a special bundle package which gives you a, a preferred rate for a period of time and then you can renew your subscription. You also have the ability to add that later, uh, but it's a preferred pricing if you do it when you sign up. Will this work on the EVGO system, which Nissan uses for their LEAF with their proprietary plugs? No, that's a, that's a different system. So the, the, if any with these plugs, the stat, these are the most standard plugs okay. yeah, around the world. So. Uh, it works on all of those. Uh, but Evie, Evie Go usually has both. They have, they have two. Yeah, yeah right. so it works just won't be the leaf. Just gotcha. it won't be the leaf. No, not a leaf plug. It, this, is, this is, we chose this plug. This is the plug that's going to be standard around the world. Uh, other manufacturers who have unique plugs uh, have moved to these standard plugs around the world as well. So. Retrofit. Yeah, gotcha. because it's got AC at the top and DC at the bottom. You can see that when you open it. And you know, I think another important thing about the trust factor of bundling these networks together, you know, for a lot of people, again, because today, if you're talking about in the US, less than one and a half percent people drive electric vehicles. There are multiple charging networks, EVGO is one of them, Electrify America, Greenlots, et cetera. Yeah. You would normally have to buy subscriptions for each and every one right. of these. So you would have different cards or different apps for each one. You'd always have to have them on you. Through Ford Pass, we're bundling that all together, and it's a one stop shop. You get to go yeah. everywhere and not have much problems. We, we were trying some journeys, and really, you needed four apps yeah, to right. do a journey and cross reference, and right. because there's high power, low power. And, and we got into we we were look, we, our experts were telling us every technical detail about it, and we came to the conclusion, customer centric. I could we could try and educate every person on all that intricacy. I think they'd be asleep by the time we finished explaining it. Or we could say, why don't we do that for you? Because you don't want to have to. That's just, idea. We'll just tell you where you want to go. Right. What do you do? And the beauty is, it's it's this whole shopping experience. We want it to be as close to one click as possible. You know, again, this is something that we're all accustomed to, right? We all love Amazon Prime. You go on there, a couple of clicks away, your product's delivered. That was the same thing. Everything about the shop by use process, end to end for the customer, has been thought through to make it as easy and seamless as possible. This is how we know we're actually leveraging the technology that's available. Yeah. This is a huge differentiator. You know, there's there's the initial big bet that someone makes with the battery electric. They're going to say, I'm going to make a green vehicle that's super efficient, not very compelling, maybe it's low cost, decontented, or I'm going to do something performance and exhilarating. We've taken the performance and exhilarating route, but also added in all the great things that technology is going to deliver. And that's where we feel this is such a such a vital and important moment yeah. for it. And so we, we opened up the order books yesterday to do pre-order. It's the first time in the history of the company. Can you believe that? We've <laughs> sold how many millions of cars? We've never had that before GT was done on the paperwork, right? But we opened up the order books and we, and we also let people specify 
which vehicle as well. We had to do all of that long before we normally do that um, and get ready for that and all the questions that it had. And you may have seen a few weeks ago, we started dropping out all the questions people ask. Ah, oh, but can you charge it in the snow? Does it work in the snow? Ah, oh, but is it fun? But well, where would I find the charger? Oh, does it work for me? All, you've seen us myth busting, we've been dropping those out for the last month or so. To, to that point, you know, an important part of, again, the customer process for us in terms of uncovering, you know, the anxieties, the wants, the needs. We did a survey, a very large survey, in Europe, North America, and China. This is a global product, but people are ultimately people. Over 42% of customers actually thought electric vehicles needed gas. And they have no idea what the difference is between an electric, a PHEV, a hybrid. They thought hybrids needed gas. They 92% thought hybrid, all electric were slow. Why? Probably because they had a, a rental car that was a hybrid or an electric that was not a fast one. So the amount of anxiety and myths and un misunderstanding around BEVs is great. And Ford has taken it upon ourselves to really educate the consumer on this and, and really bring the industry forward. So, so maybe, one more question from the front and then we'll open it a, up to There's a question or two on this side as well. So can we order some jobs? Um, can we open it up one-on-one? Yeah. Is, is the, the platform on skateboarding Expand more in terms of wheelbase. And yes, so, so this is one of Ford's five vehicle architectures that we announced a little while back. This one was uh, began its design in 2017 and is a modular architecture so that we could do different sizes and a certain bandwidth of vehicles over it. Of course, if you want you know 300 mile range, you need more battery, which is why it generally has a longer wheelbase. But if we wanted to do a smaller vehicle, we could, but we'd probably be dropping the range. But we also have a partnership, as you know, with Volkswagen. Uh, with their MEV platform to do a smaller vehicle for Europe, uh, whether or not we do something for the states, that's probably unlikely because we have this platform. Uh, well, we're, so we're, I'm sorry, with regard to the uh, drive range, where do we think the market interest will be uh, all wheel versus uh, rear wheel drive? Well, certainly in the Northeast, we know how important four wheel drive is. For us, it was a no brainer to have it the all wheel drive. So we, we expect, the, particularly in the Northeast, all wheel drive to do exceptionally well. I think also for uh, home state of Ford in Michigan, certainly California where you have great weather in Southern California, there may be more pull for rear-wheel drive with exceptional customers that want the GT and want all that performance. So the base vehicle is rear-wheel drive, so it has the larger drive motor with mid-range battery. Then you go up to the premium series you can get, which has the large drive motor, small drive motor, mid-range or long-range battery. And then the GT has the two large drive motors, and that's what gives you the prodigious torque. You've got 600 12 pounds, yeah. pounds, foot pounds of torque, and 459 horsepower. So is, does the driver have any ability to disengage the front wheel drive? Uh, it, it, could, it controls the power delivery to front rear, uh, both permanent magnet motors, and so it determines what, what it needs, and it can, for efficiency, yes. yeah. Or, yeah.